Guys, this is Fletch here from Ultimate Halo. I am here with my friend, the Sparta Cat, otherwise known as Kenneth or Kenneth. Friend. Friend, well. Downgraded to friend. Um, yeah. Well, the okay. truth is, I really fucking don't like you. You're a, um, am I allowed to use that word? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, let's honk it out. Uh, and then here <laughs> is uh, now our new host of the podcast, uh, this gentleman is now going to be introducing himself, and his name is... What's up, guys? Dean Abdu here on Halo Follower. Oh, wait. No! Not anymore. Now I'm on my Halo. Drama. Uh, I know, but I'm here now, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like Jack said, I'll be hosting the podcast, because if you remember me back in the good old days, or the days, I don't know if they were good anymore, uh, I used to do podcast-type stuff. A uh, thing called Halo Club, but for today's episode, I'll let Jack take the lead because yeah, I'm still a newbie here, so I don't want to, like, you know, take control and uh, dominate the world and all oh. that. Oh, that's super, oh super cute, Dean. Well, the first thing we Ooh. would like to say uh, <laughs> before we go ahead and uh, get onto the topics on today's podcast is we would like you guys to put in the comment section down below some questions for ourselves, whether it's in relation to Halo 5 whether it's in relation to Halo Wars 2, um, whether it's a meme, uh, whether it's about Kenny and his stupid cat, I don't hear the end of. Um, <laughs> anything you want, just just put it in the questions and, and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens in the following episodes to come. Next, uh, the first topic we would like to address is a new year, a new Ultimate Halo. I personally hate that saying, a uh, new year, new meme, but... <laughs> There's a good reason why. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's not just a new year. Uh, it, it, is a, it means a lot of things for Ultimate Halo. Kenny, you like this side of things. Tell me what a new year means to Ultimate Halo. A new year means new memes. Oh, Back yes. to you, Fletch. Oh, well, that's about that's it. All I and want. that's the end of the podcast. We'll see you next year, guys. <laughs> no, but yeah, seriously. I mean, what, what does it mean to us? What does it mean to the guys watching the videos um, and, and our friends in the community? Well, yeah. I think it's. It's kind of bigger than just us, though, because everyone had a pretty shit 2016. Mm. Uh, I, I guess the general consensus, I shouldn't say everyone, but the general kind of consensus is that 2016, for a multitude of reasons, was pretty shit. Um, whether that's stuff in real life or just Halo. Halo had ups and downs, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but in general, it could have been better. And so in 2017, uh, I definitely noticed, especially on Twitter, where most of the Halo community is on social media, everyone is trying to make 2017 the best possible year, the most positive year that we can, uh, especially after that goddamn Watch Mojo video, hmm. uh, fucking calling the Halo community the most, one of the most toxic communities. I think it was like three or, or number four third, on their yeah. list or whatever. It doesn't oh, matter wow. what they said. Basically, if we all kind of pitch in and try to put out the best kind of content that we all can and be as constructive as we can for things that we don't like and, and promoting as much positive stuff that we can, uh, whether that's Ultimate Halo or, or Ready Up Live or, or Halo Canon, Halo Collective, whatever your channel is, if you have a channel, no matter your size, if we all pitch in, I think that we can eventually, it will take time, it won't be easy, but I think that we can eventually make somewhat of a difference but. as to what people think of our Halo community inspirational music can now fade out but that doesn't mean we can't talk about negative things but it's just about right, being right. constructive it's not about oh guys this is shit end of story yeah. it's like okay this isn't so great any ideas that, and it's just yeah, about no that used to be the trend too mm. that that actually kind of is the trend still um negative stuff baiting people with possibly negative stuff in things like titles or tags or, or descriptions or, or however you market a video saying like is Halo dead? All caps, question mark, red is circles, red Is the Master arrows. Chief who we really think he is? <laughs> right, right. Like, stuff like uh, that. If it's, you know, if, if it's yeah. tangible content where something might actually be like that and that is a possibility and that's the topic of the video, yes. But to put that in, as your marketing when something is not really even remotely how you're suggesting that it might be, that, that needs to stop because it, it's destructive and it, it's damaging to the community people, I don't know, people just don't like to hear that. People don't want to hear that. They want Halo to do well. 
people want to like the game, but it makes it really hard to do that when you're promoting the stuff that seems like it might be worse than it really is. It's called being a tosser. Um, so, <laughs> I, I mean, more in la- relation to Ultimate Halo specifically rather than the community, um, I think you put on Twitter, can it 100,000 uh, subscribers, which we're probably going to do. We're going to probably smash it, I reckon. Um, we've got, Hopefully. I yeah. mean, we're getting there. You're not too far off. No. I mean, we've got his boy Dean Abdu on board. He, he's going to be making some uh, fabulous content. Uh, we've got the release of Halo Wars 2. If uh, if we don't decide to jump off to another channel this release, uh, we'll probably <laughs> uh, make the most of that. Um, so it is going to be a big you know, year for Ultimate Halo. I think we're deciding to dedicate more of our lives uh, to... Uh, the content itself. Um, so it's going to be a big time. Uh, we're going to expect a lot of new things. So, I mean, w- what do you think, Dean? What what would you like to see out of Ultimate Halo this year? So, new year, new Ultimate Halo, literally new Halo channel for myself. Um, but I think what's going to be good is that I've been, I'm out of it for like a solid year. But the last time I made a Halo video was over a year ago now, which is going to be something really weird. Uh, and I do plan on doing like a video on this channel coming up hopefully which will be a topical one <gasps> a video like, why one video why i gave up that's it and then i'm done just this one video and then i'm out <laughs> uh, but i've no video but like what why i gave up on halo me being someone who started halo what over 10 years ago now when it first came out uh, uh combat evolved first 10 years Dean, it's 15 get with it boy <laughs> wow <'Cause> I, there <laughs> we wow. see I'm, i've lost and that's what I'm saying. I need to I need to retune myself back in. But what I'm hoping in this new Ultimate Halo, what this whole new year should bring is just a more, much more positive community, like Kenny is saying, just like more community push. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I'm coming back to Halo content mm. type stuff, because I've been seeing sort of all the Halo 5 Forge creations and all the customs type stuff and all the community feedback and everything that's been going on. And it seems like slowly, but surely, in my personal opinion... Halo is eventually going to go back in the right direction of being the amazing franchise that it once was. It's been very rocky, to say the least, with this whole 343 taking over and just making it their own. And I fully appreciate that. But, you know, as I said, it seems like this new year has a lot going for it that hopefully will bring it back to its core. And Halo Wars 2. Who's not excited for Halo Wars 2? Well, I'm excited. Everyone's excited. But exactly. speaking of rocky things, segue... Let's talk about the newly announced pre-order bonuses for when you pre-order Halo Wars 2 Ultimate Edition. It is kind of a mess, in my opinion, because most of us have likely already pre-ordered Halo Wars 2 in either physical or digital form from uh, the Microsoft Marketplace or somebody else um, before these bonuses were announced. But for myself, at least, I pre-ordered directly out of the Xbox Marketplace and... Only did that because I wanted to get the Definitive Edition code early. Still haven't gotten my code, by the way. But if you pre-order from Best Buy, GameStop, Game in the UK, or EB Games in Australia, there are four different editions that you can get uh, different pre-order bonuses from. And some of them are definitely worse than others, to say the least. And I don't know why. What do you guys think about these? Well, well. I mean, the thing is, I feel pretty screwed because uh, I, I I always want a physical edition for my collection anyway. Um, so I pre-ordered at game. There's no definitive edition. Uh, obviously, I got the uh, ultimate edition, is it, uh, for Halo Wars 2? Yeah. Uh, so I didn't get Halo Wars 1 for PC. Uh, I had a real job trying to find out whether they did or not. And then it turns out it was only digital per, uh, uh, purchases. Uh, so as a result, I was kind of like, well, I want to play the first Halo Wars on my PC, but I have to purchase the ultimate edition again now if it was just a normal edition i could pre-order then i would have just got that and probably save myself more money as well uh but so i've had to get two ultimate editions and spend more money than i should have to i mean in regards to you know the little bonuses i think yeah that's that's fine i mean in regards to the 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 icons a uh, little figure uh you get um at best buy i feel like it sort of cheaped me out of the loot crate a little bit yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's just a little frustrating I'm not too bothered because I still enjoy the loot crate so I'm not going to really complain too much about it um, as far as I'm aware I mean game what what, what was that Get, just blit, blitz pack I mean jeez you know yeah. collectors want something to collect not something they're just going to use in a multiplayer mm. game it's pointless even just a steel book that would have done me just fine so 
I don't know. What What about you, Dean Fabdu? I'm <laughs> looking over all of them now, and they're all so drastically different from one another. Like, just in case people yeah. haven't really heard about them, uh, I just uploaded a video uh, a couple minutes ago covering all these pre-order bonuses. That's a quick rundown. That's really weird that they've gone down this route, because obviously that's the, the best bundle to get. Because Steelbook, everyone loves a good Steelbook. It always looks good on shelves. You get two of the fine known Halo Wars 2 pins and two of those uh, uh, card packs. So the Shipmaster Blitz card pack and the Aatrox Blitz card pack. I don't know. I, it's, what? it's weird. I don't get why they've not done it like that, like the same one across every place. Like in, it would have made more sense like in each different uh, store that they did like just a slight different thing like maybe different pins for each one or uh different design steelbook packaging or something like that or diff- different card packs but they've just gone down the route of having a lot different in each one which doesn't make that much sense yeah no it, it's just weird right it definitely feels like other people are getting a bit uh, you know to put it nicely a bit screwed over <laughs> compared to others just because of where they live which is a bit you know unfair <laughs> it's like I, I know me and jack uk boys i mean well me definitely i'd love to have the australian uh pre-order mm. ver- version of all this yeah, is there a way that i can there. probably but yeah. you gotta pay a lot for shipping uh, it's not worth yeah, it i was gonna say it's a pay- yeah it's paying it backside so i mean, I just i you know, I'm not too bothered at the end of the day. It's not the end of the world, but it's just... No, no, definitely not. Especially, you know, for fans who want to buy the limited products, you, yeah. you're not getting a lot for your money, whereas you see other people are. It just it kind of exactly. makes you a bit salty. But it's, it's just back to that argument that, like, if you're going to pay so much for the special edition packs, you want to get your money's worth. Uh, and it was similar, like, in my personal opinion, with the Halo 5 um limited edition uh, versions like that was what was it 150 pounds between 100 and 150 pounds and you got the statue and just a few other extra bundles and it didn't really in my opinion seem worth it for that much whereas you had like going to a different game fallout 4 when that came out that was 100 quid and you had this fallout crate with a pit boy in there and everything and the pit boy was fully functional with your smartphones you just want to feel like you're getting your money's worth when you buy these limited edition things because people they love their memorabilia and they love their steelbook casings and all that. So yeah, yeah it's very strange. So this next one uh, is an important one and it, I think it shows a, a sign of what's to come, not just in 2017, uh, but for the for the following years, for Halo's future. Um, so what does Halo have in store for 2017? Now, uh, obviously there's Halo Wars 2, uh, there's possible Halo 5 updates and a big one also, uh, it's the next, you know, big, big Halo game, uh, a possible Halo 6 teaser or reveal or, you know, announcement. Um, now, we'll keep to Halo Wars 2 very quickly. Um, I personally think Halo Wars 2 is going to do pretty well. I think the it doesn't have as high an expectation as the first person games. And I think, you know, Halo Wars 1 was well received, but I think it's just, I think it's going to hit the nail on the head. Uh, with the whole console and, uh, you know, RTS thing. So hopefully that's going to go down well. Uh, and any thoughts around that? I think Halo well, Wars, Halo Wars too- it's a very... Shut up, Dean. Sorry. Shut up, Dean. <laughs> Sorry. Shut the fuck up. I, 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 think- <laughs> lead. I think Halo Wars 2 has a lot to prove uh, coming from kind of the bottom of the barrel, I think, in what most people say of uh, kind mm-hmm. of the league of RTS games. I think Halo Wars 2 has a lot to prove. Halo Wars made an impact, a huge impact, as a console RTS. Now it's coming to PC as well, so it definitely has a lot to prove in that space. Um, But I think with Blitz, uh, especially with Blitz and the kind of different ways how they want to make Halo Wars 2 an RTS for everyone, I think it has a lot of potential to do great things for the community, to get everyone kind of interested in the RTS series uh, that are Halo fans and FPS fans. And I think think it'll do well. I think people are going to like it. And they describe it as an action RTS as well. Um, you know, yeah. rather than just a normal RTS, to sort of make that clear distinction that uh, it, it's not a normal real-time strategy. You know, it is got more of those action elements in there. Now you can share your thoughts, Dean. Yeah, go on, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, Halo Wars. That it's a very different genre to the uh, normal Halo games, which you know, RTS, and then you've got Halo, which is first-person shooter games. Uh, but that is like a complete different market as well. So it will get a different reception from that market, if you get me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But as a RTS game, I think it does work really well. Like no one expected 
it to translate so well and personally i was pretty surprised with how good it was because i remember when halo wars was coming out i was like oh rts this is this is not going to be that good because halo's a first person shooter and then lo and behold when it was released it was actually really enjoyable and fun cool fact so halo, halo was originally an rts but moving on you can do your own research about that um a possible oh, yeah. halo 5 updates I, I, yeah there probably is going to be more updates i don't have a doubt about it um i think mainly it's going to come towards forge stuff i think forge I just, is i don't know if there's anything major that we can really expect because i think halo 5 is a completed game now uh, it was not obviously at launch but i i think we have essentially everything we could want well campaign theater. i mean not everything but a good story as far as as far as you know, multiplayer content, yeah. the stuff that keeps the game alive. I think we have everything that we pretty much need. I mean, we can't change campaign or anything like mm. that. I, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else that could be really be added. I'd be surprised. I mean, we know there's content updates coming throughout 2017, somewhere in 2017 at least, uh, with those Reach helmets that they yes. uh, revealed earlier. So we know stuff is coming. I just don't know what else will be coming with it, aside from just wreck drops and new forge items. I don't know if there's a whole lot to expect there time will tell and then just lastly uh we've got the halo 6 teaser uh personally I, I think it could go either one of two ways it can spark massive hype depending on how, how they do it or people just will be very skeptical 343 will get a lot of flack as, as they always tend to do um <laughs> you know and, and i think if if 343 do it well and i almost want them to do it from an open perspective announce things and when they talk about features yeah we've learned this from halo 5 and halo 4 and halo wars we want to do this to make you know the fans happy and do that um i think we're you know i think people relate a bit more i think that was always the problem when halo 5 came out there was that clear barrier and i think 343 have done a really good job of breaking it down since um being a bit more open and honest um or just being just being better at communicating with the community um so yeah. it, it, but obviously Microsoft's got the marketing campaigns so obviously there's that <laughs> conflict there um, it, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out um, at, once again time will tell on that indeed I, mean, I definitely you... think there will be a Halo 6 uh, teaser this year obviously there must be it's been it, it'll be two years since the last uh, since the Halo 5 teaser would it no it wouldn't no, it'll, Halo it'll be CGI either way yeah indeed. something like um, surely there has to be something whether it's a Reach esque spin-off or the next actual installment in the main timeline. I would expect that there'd be something. I, I feel like there just can't be nothing, you know? Yeah, I'd be very surprised if they didn't show uh, anything come E3. Like, even if it's not Halo 6 stuff, I feel like something Halo-related would be shown. Scorpio, though. Scorpio's be. coming up. And, yeah, you know, right, Microsoft yeah, right. want the hype to get going on Scorpio. So be saying, look, buy this new Indeed. console now, play our current games, but look you've got a Halo game coming out for it in the not-too-distant future, so... Yeah. Well, also, kind of thinking back to how Halo originally launched as well with the original Xbox in 2001, it would kind of be a pretty badass thing to launch a new major Halo game with a new generation of an Xbox console. I feel like that's what they line. wanted to do with the Xbox One, but they weren't quite ready then. Oh, so yeah, yeah. they might capitalize with the Scorpio. Fingers crossed. I don't think it'll happen though. I think it, they might have another studio somewhere secretly working on something. Uh, I hope mm -hmm. they do. That'd be nice. Five uh, six five. Yeah, five point five. Um, secretly, Warner Brothers Games is making the next Halo. <gasps> Imagine that. Leaks. <laughs> I think we're going to have to call it a day at that, guys. Um, you can follow everyone on Twitter. Uh, links will certainly be in the description uh, for myself, Kenny, and Dean Abdu. Yeah, boy. Please, once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And we'll definitely get around to answering some of the more interesting ones in next week's podcast. And if you have any feedback, suggestions, let us know as well. But in the meantime, my name has been Jack Fletcher. I've been joined by Dean Abdu and Kenny, otherwise known as the Sparta Cat. And we will see you in the next Next one. Peace out, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, -bye. Your mom. It was hot.